Lifting Up Jesus, Opening His Word from Australia, Denmark, Israel, Japan, New Zealand, Northern Ireland, Republic of Ireland, Singapore, South Africa, United Kingdom, Thailand, the Philippines, United States, and throughout the world. You're watching L'Oreal TV. Well, in a nutshell, summary is impossible. It's a very complicated time in history that has many facets. The books are Harpezo and Shadows of the Beast, how the identity of the coming Antichrist will be revealed to the faithful church, and Harpezo, which is the Greek word, the actual word for rapture. It's in those books, and we explain it in considerable depth from multiple, again, multiple angles and multiple aspects. The last seven years of history, the 70th week of Daniel by the lunar calendar, is broken into two halves. It's broken into two halves. Now, the first mistake many people make is saying, oh, mid-trib means that the rapture is going to take at the halfway through a point. So you only have to calculate or tabulate from when the Antichrist makes a covenant with Israel and then breaks it halfway through. That's when the rapture is. That's not when the rapture is. The rapture is between the sixth and seventh seals which take place slightly after the midpoint at some point. Now, what happens in those first three and a half years? There are three things that restrain evil, that restrain Satan. One is the convicting power of the Holy Spirit, who convicts the world concerning sin, righteousness, and judgment. The Holy Spirit stops restraining the powers of Satan, and the Antichrist becomes physically manifested on the earth. God reverts to behaving the way he did in the Old Testament. The era of grace has come to an end during that period. That's why you see the judgments that take place in the book of Exodus so, and so forth at the time of the Passover are replayed or are recapitulated at that time. So grace comes to an end and the age of the church comes to an end. That's not to say the believers are removed. Remember, before the day of Pentecost, the believers were here. The Holy Spirit was inside of them. When Jesus breathed on the apostles, he said, receive the Holy Spirit. They were here. They had the Holy Spirit inside of them, but the Holy Spirit was not poured out on Christ and on the church on earth until the day of Pentecost. The church only, as it were, existed embryonically before Pentecost. We may say it was born on Pentecost. But the believers were here before Pentecost, and they had the Holy Spirit inside of them. During that period between, again, and we explained this before to some degree, that period between the ascension of Jesus and Pentecost is when the apostles fully understood about the son of perdition, Judas, who's again a picture of the Antichrist. During this coming period, the faithful church will have understood who the Antichrist is and what his agenda is, and of course that of the false prophet as well. But it will be a time of what Daniel calls the shattering of the power of the holy people. Work while you have the light. Night will come. No man can work. Now, during this three and a half year period, the two witnesses, one of them, obviously, if not both of them, in the spirit and power of Elijah, will be operating. It's going to be very different, however, than it is now. Grace has come to an end. Those witnesses will be empowered to call down fire and destruction the way that Elijah did, or the way that Moses was able to invoke divine judgment on the enemies of God and his people. It will not be a period of grace, and the church as such will not exist. Believers will, but not the church. Now, again, there are multiple aspects of this forthcoming time. It will also be a time of increasing pressure on the church and persecution. The church will have become so worldly and compromised that, as we've explained before, persecution becomes a kind of necessary evil, a kind of necessary evil to purify the church and to remove the dead wood. 
Again, many problems with this. The Lord allows it, but it is not the wrath of God. It is the tribulation of Satan. This time of three and a half years is the thanipsis, the tribulation. It is not the orge, the wrath of God. One of the mistakes that the pre-tribulational people make is they give themselves a license with no basis whatsoever. They simply give themselves a license because of what they decide they want to believe, but they have no basis in Scripture to believe it. To equate the Greek words orge, wrath, with the Greek word thalipsis, tribulation. They say the 70th week of Daniel, the seventh week, the day of the Lord, the wrath, the, the day of his wrath, and the, and the great tribulation are all the same thing. No, they're not all the same thing. They mean distinctly different things in different contexts in Scripture. We need to go back and understand what the Scriptures meant by those things, as the Holy Spirit inspired it to be written, and stop believing nonsense and garbage that was invented by John Darby and his followers 150 years ago. This is all rubbish. People are believing things found, you know, invented by a cult leader, a cult founder like John Darby, and a convicted swindler, an embezzler sent to prison like Cyrus Schofield. They got their pre-tribulational eschatology, their pre-tribulational end-time doctrine from a cult leader and from a convicted swindler. It's ridiculous. We need to throw that rubbish into the rubbish bin where it belongs and go back to understand what the first century church understood by these terms and how they understood the sequence of events. We cannot base doctrine on the church fathers or on patristic literature, but some of the church fathers, as I said before, particularly the Irenaeus, Higesippus, Papias access of patristic writings, derived from the Apostle John via someone called Polycarp. They're the most historically reliable record we have about what the apostles believed and taught outside the New Testament. And it was clear that the apostles taught, and the apostle John who wrote Revelation taught, the church would have to identify the Antichrist before the rapture would happen. But instead, people listened to a cult leader, a man with a deranged mind like John Darby, uh, a man who said the epistle of James is not written for Christians, and the Sermon on the Mount is not for believers, and the Olivet Discourse is not for believers, a man who was spiritually deranged, a false teacher, a man who practiced everything from infant baptism to, 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 to a despotic form of leadership that the other major evangelicals of his era who knew him said was wrong and dangerous. Remember, Charles Spurgeon, George Mueller, D.L. Moody, none of these men, none of the great luminaries of that day liked Darby, trusted Darby, or respected Darby. They publicly warned against Darby. Charles Spurgeon took out full-page ads in the newspaper warning against Darby. Yet, instead of listening to what the Apostle John believed, they listened to Darby. Instead of paying attention to people like Charles Spurgeon or, or George Mueller or, or Dr. Samuel Trigalis, who were among the founders of the Brethren, they listened to this cult leader, Darby, this man who was spiritually deranged, a cult leader. Or they listened to Cyrus Schofield, his protege, a criminally convicted embezzler sent to prison as a swindler. That, that's where they get their doctrine, from a swindler and a cult leader, instead of getting it from the apostles of the apostolic tradition. Well, when we go back to the actual tradition of the early church, we see that the first three and a half years will be one when the Antichrist will be manifested and the elect will know who he is. The faithful church will know who he is and know what to do about it. The two witnesses will become active at this time. The spirit and the ministry and the power of Elijah will be activated at this time with the name on restoration of all things, as Jesus put it. That's what's going to be taking place during this period. No place does the Scripture say the Holy Spirit will be taken. It simply says he will cease restraining the power of Satan. Now, there's two other things in addition to the Holy Spirit that restrain the power of Satan. What is human government? But human governments will be given into the hands of Antichrist. That's what's happening now. I have no doubt that as we speak, the reconfederation of the countries in the Roman Empire with the European Union, the trends, to, the trends towards globalization and globalism, the New World Order, if you want to use the term, although I shy away from it because of its misuse by conspiracy theorists, these are setting the stage 
for the coming of Antichrist. Much the same as the ecumenical movement and the interfaith movement and Rick Warren's global peace plan. They're setting the stage for Antichrist. So human government will no longer restrain evil in any sense. They'll control the governments. Then there's the third thing that restrains evil, of course, is the preaching of the gospel. But Jesus said, work while you have the light. Night will come, no man can work. The gospel as we know it will not be preached at that time. What will be preached is the gospel of the kingdom. That is the gospel, but it's preached in a heavily prophetic character that the Lord is coming soon. And it will not be a gospel of grace and peace. It will be a gospel of impending divine judgment. That's what takes place during the first three and a half years. But it's much, much more involved than we have time to tell in a clip or a film. Please avail yourself of the books, Shadows of the Beast and Harpezo. It's in there, and it's in there at some length. My name is Jacob Prash. God bless and thank you.